Thank you, guys. Uh, so, um, as was mentioned, I, um, I'm Mom Cho, and I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Lean Plum. And uh, with Lean Plum, we enable product managers and marketers to make the most out of the data that they collect from their customers. But not only data, but also take actions from the data they, uh, they've collected. Um, and we focus on A-B testing. We've got analytics, and uh, we have a lot of other um, parts of the product, including messaging. And um, so just before we get started, actually, um, how many of you have experienced running any A-B tests? It could be on the web, or it could be mobile. Just want to see a show of hands. OK. That's a good amount. Um, so today in this talk, I'll talk about A-B testing, um, how it's uh, some of the best practices that I've seen in the mobile space. Uh, and uh, some of you who haven't actually had the chance to run A-B tests, hopefully we'll uh, uh, get, get some good ideas about A-B tests they could potentially run. Um, so with A-B testing, the thing that we discovered when we started the company about a couple years ago was that there's really two problems when it comes to mobile uh, with A-B testing. The first problem is that it's really hard to actually run A-B tests. And uh, like was, uh, so like uh, we mentioned, I actually uh, worked at Google with my co-founder for several years, and we uh, built some of the core infrastructure for A-B testing. And so we got used to this uh, uh, ability to be able to iterate very quickly. You uh, go in, you can come up with an A-B test in the morning. By the afternoon, you've already launched it, and you can get some results back pretty soon. And uh, when people switch to mobile in the mobile app world, they realize this is actually not the case. Uh, typically, a product manager or marketer needs to talk to the developer team to be able to uh, get the changes out. Um, that's an organizational challenge, typically. Um, and then not only that, but then also Apple could take up to two weeks to approve your app, um, depending on what time, uh, time of the year it is. So this whole process really slows things down. And then finally, when you uh, actually get some results back from your A-B test, um, you actually need somebody to interpret those results for you, to tell you if it's, uh, um, it's a bit statistically significant result, is it going to stay if you actually launch this to 100% of the users. So this whole process really makes it really hard to iterate quickly on mobile. Um, so that's one of the uh, pieces, just the tools are just not there, were not there when we started the company. And then the second piece is actually um, more about the ideas about the A-B test. And a lot of people have this conception that um, A-B testing is kind of like panacea. So you just uh, keep trying and data is going to solve your problems. There's actually an art piece of that. And that's why we've got this uh, 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 presentation today, which is Zen and the art of mobile A-B testing. The art piece really comes in uh, from having good ideas and uh, being able to get good insights from the data you collect and then being, ab being able to actually utilize those in your uh, mobile app. OK, so um, what is uh, the player nirvana that we talk about? So um, we've seen a lot at the conference here, people talking about user acquisition costs. They're really high. And then uh, there's actually another piece to that component as well. And so everybody looks at acquisition costs, but then the LTV or the lifetime value is also really important. And how do you make the most out of uh, the users that you've already uh, acquired? Well, you need to make sure that you have the most ideal user experience in your mobile game. And so uh, that's really the art behind uh, A-B testing is just coming up with the insights that will drive that ideal user experience. And the science behind it is, of course, being able to actually run the test, uh, look at the uh, data, analyze it, and then uh, decide if it's uh, significant or not. And so every A-B test basically starts with three things. And uh, this is what you should be thinking when you are approaching A-B testing on mobile. The first thing is agreeing on the objective that you uh, actually want to optimize. And we'll get more into that a little bit in a little bit. The second one is actually coming up with the hypothesis and the test that you actually want to run. And then finally, looking at the analytics behind the A-B test and understanding the uh, results. So the first one, which is agreeing on the uh, objective, um, this is all about understanding what are the benchmarks out there in the industry and where you stand compared to those. So um, one example is a typical one-day retention for a lot of games out there is about 50%. So maybe if you uh, look at the analytics for your uh, uh, game, you may notice that your, uh, your one-day retention is maybe 40%. So that will give you an idea of an area to optimize. Um, and so this is just one example, but there's actually uh, a lot of different areas that you should be thinking about. The first one is uh, just activation. Um, how do you get the first users who actually come into your game uh, to stay and to be uh, happy with the uh, game experience they receive on the first day? And this is really by far the uh, most critical area to optimize in your game. And I've seen with all the companies we work with, this is probably the, the one where it yields the biggest results for them. And why is that? Because uh, you're really at the top of the funnel. Um, this is where you uh, collect 
the most number of users and you have the biggest opportunity to keep them. If you're trying to optimize something which is on day 30 for the user experience, that's going to be tough, but you, gotta, you have a lot more users on day one. Um, the second thing is engagement. How do you actually get people to like the game, uh, share it with their friends, and just uh, feel good about it? And then the third piece is now that you've got engaged users, how do you actually bring those users back if maybe they get uh, stuck in the game or um, they, they haven't come back in a few uh, days or maybe a week? And then finally, how do you actually make money out of the uh, users that you've uh, already uh, acquired? And so this is the four areas that I'm going to focus today in the talk, and I'll give you uh, two A-B testing ideas um, for each one of these areas. Okay, so the second piece when it comes to A-B testing is building your test, and this is really the art of it. Like, you need to really get inspired, um, maybe talk to your friends. It's great to be at a conference like this and see what other people are trying, because a lot of times game developers end up reinventing the wheel over and over, and the tests that they've run, they've probably been run by other companies uh, as well, and they, they can probably get the low-hanging fruit first if they talk to their uh, other colleagues. And people are actually willing to share results. That's the other interesting part that I've noticed is um, a lifting um, tide lift, lifts all boats. So it's uh, really about um, the industry as a whole and a lot of people are willing to share their uh, best practices and results. Okay. Um, and finally, when you actually run a test and it looks successful, maybe you've managed to increase your day one retention by adding a tutorial to your uh, game and it goes from 40% to 45%. And this is great, but this is not typically what happens with A-B testing. And the, the typical case is where you end up running a test and there's uh, no results, or maybe it's not conclusive. And um, this, the science behind it is really being able to zero in on why an A-B test didn't work, and then understanding where there are potential areas to improve, and then iterating over and over and over again. So really the persistence behind it is the key uh, here. And uh, if you get lucky and get a 5% lift on your one-day retention, that's, that's great too. Um, but to be able to really understand and drill down into your uh, A-B testing results, the first thing is understanding segments. So there's actually a famous uh, paradox uh, that uh, people have described called Simpson's Paradox, which, uh, tells, uh, which says that um, if you look at the entire user population as a whole, uh, typically you don't really find any interesting patterns. But when you drill down into uh, individual segments of users, then you start to get uh, interesting data. Um, one example, a classic example, is of course whales, um, highly paying uh, individual versus uh, a non-whale. So if you uh, drill down into your game, maybe overall you don't really have a lot of interesting patterns from the A-B test that you've run, but if you actually look at whales, maybe you'll find some in something interesting there. Another thing you can potentially look at is geography. Maybe your game is performing really great in France, but you didn't realize that because French population is small compared to overall user base, and it just gets uh, smoothed out in terms of results. Uh, the second thing you need to look at is make sure that you have enough users in the A-B test. And th this is a common pitfall from a lot of tests that I've seen where people have a great A-B testing idea, but they just run in at a really small percentage of their users, so they don't end up with any statistically significant results in, a, in a m enough time, right? So you can potentially run your test for uh, a month, but that's not really what you want to do. So uh, really the, the key here is understanding how much user base you need, and you can get help with the tools that you're using, of course, to be able to uh, get an idea with that. Um, the, sec the third thing is looking at trade-offs, and uh, this came out from, uh, again, from our experience at Google, where I've probably run maybe hundreds of A-B tests, and not a single time was an A-B test completely positive in every single direction. It's always a trade-off, and you need to understand what trade-offs you're taking when you actually run a test. Uh, the typical trade-off is monetization versus one-day retention. So if you show ads, maybe you're hurting the user experience a little bit, but you need to understand how little are you willing to hurt to be able to generate X number of dollars out of those users. Um, fourth thing is uh, measuring conversions. Um, this is another common pitfall which I've seen where um, people end up um, optimizing for overall um, KPIs, like maybe a one-day retention or a seven-day retention or engagement, but then they, don't, they forget to actually look at the individual test results. So maybe if you're running a tutorial, you should also construct the funnel of the tutorial steps and just to make sure that all the steps are correctly set up and, and, and see if maybe uh, some of your steps uh, have a significant drop off. So really zeroing in on, on the actual test that you're running and understanding what are the specific metrics that you are um, trying to improve. So this is really how you optimize the high level KPIs step by step with the little uh, improvements that you make. And then finally, statistical significance. This is uh, probably the most important thing you should be paying attention to when you run an A-B test. This is uh, basically verifying that you have 95% confidence or whatever percent you are comfortable with to verify that the data that you've collected 
is going to pan out the, you know, the result is, if it's a positive result, it's going to stay the same if you end up rolling to 100% of the users. And this needs to be true across all metrics that you look at, not just for a particular goal metric that you set up. Okay, so let's get into activation. Um, this is, again, the 10 second rule here. So uh, when you start a, a new game, when you download the game, you have very little patience to understand what the game is actually about. So that's why game developers really, really focus on the first 10 second experience. Um, there is actually, um, this is also common outside of gaming. Companies like Facebook, for example, are said to spend half the time on the development of a new feature on just tweaking the first 10 second user experience for that feature. And that's uh, basically the onboarding experience or the, uh, um, in the gaming world, that's the player tutorial that you've got. And so uh, this is, uh, so in terms of optimization, so th by far, you know, the biggest improvement is just uh, putting in, if you don't have already a tutorial uh, of your game, and then if you do have one already, just understanding where the drop-offs are and optimizing it with a lot of A-B testing and tweaking. Um, and this is uh, gonna affect your one-day retention significantly as well. Um, this can be done in several different ways. You can either use uh, custom code to create your own tutorial, or uh, I've seen companies also use in-app messaging as well, uh, which are just messages that are chained together as step one, two, three, four, that people go through to be able to uh, create a tutorial. And the end result is, of course, you have uh, much more improved one-day retention, which some people in the industry consider that one-day retention for a game is by far the most important metric. And um, this is, I, I wouldn't argue with that, but I'd say, you know, there's a lot of metrics that you need to look at, but one-day retention is very, very critical for a successful game. Okay, um, and so how do you run this uh, A-B test? Uh, you run it typically on new users, which is when uh, people encounter the new user tutorial. And then um, there's a lot of steps that you need to optimize, which is the number of steps in the tutorial, um, the completion uh, incentive that you have for different people, or even just turning off the tutorial overall just to get a baseline of where people are if there's no tutorial in the game. And that's great for an A-B test as well. And then in terms of what you actually measure to see what is uh, success actually look like, um, there are high-level KPIs that you should always be paying attention to. Um, there's time spent in the app per user, there is uh, the uh, famous uh, addiction ratio, which is DAU divided by MAU, and this is what a lot of games strive to optimize. Um, there's also the one day, seven day, 30 day retention, and if you are running a game as a service, then start getting into uh, 90 day, 180 day retention there as well. And then uh, finally, um, ARPU and ARPU. -poo. Um, and then that's really the high level um, metrics that you need to optimize when you're running a tutorial, but there's also, as I mentioned, the low level metrics as well, such as uh, funnel analysis, so you need to create a funnel with all the steps in the tutorial and optimize um, time spent in each step. Um, overall time spent in the tutorial, you want to make sure that people are not spending too much time in the tutorial, maybe there are certain things that you can tweak there to improve it. Um, and then just step by step completion percentage as well. Okay, the next one is um, optimizing early monetization. Uh, this is very interesting because studies have shown that users who uh, monetize really early on in the life cycle of the game end up becoming a mu much higher chance of becoming whales. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you need to really make sure that you uh, give them a chance to monetize with something small. Typically in the US it's 99 cents, but something small that people can purchase um, in the first day of uh, the user experience. Uh, but there's actually another reason as well, it's just that on the first day you have a lot more users to monetize on. So if you are able to um, drive some small monetization across um, uh, early on in the game, uh, of course you have a bigger base to monetize on. Okay. Um, and so, again, this is for new users typically. This is what you run the test on. And uh, you, you can uh, implement this with an in-app message typically, and uh, maybe you can show a promotion for um, your users to get them to uh, try uh, a purchase, or maybe when they have a particular emotional milestone in the game, you pop up a message and say, hey, uh, there's actually another way you can potentially approach this with an in-app purchase. Um, and you can um, optimize the price point of the purchase, uh, Maybe you can give them a discount to make them feel good about it. And um, also just the look and feel of the in-app message. The, could be the background image, the call to action text, the button itself. Um, and then what do you measure? Again, high level metrics are there that you need to always pay attention to. But in terms of low level, um, on the actual offer that you're sending to the user, you need to look at the total views for the offer, the total clicks or engagement for that offer, and also um, click through rate. That's a, a typical um, metric. Okay. The next area to optimize in your game is engagement. And uh, this is really about 
um, how do you um, monitor the various paths that the users can take in your game and how do you optimize those? And for this, this is really critical to um, understand how the funnels work in your game, where people are progressing and uh, how they're getting through the various levels. And uh, it could also be UI optimizations um, or just driving user feature adoption. Maybe you have a sharing feature, but you don't have enough people to actually use that feature. So how do you drive adoption for that? Okay. And, um, a um, this is by far probably the most popular uh, use case for A-B testing that I've seen. Um, this is basically just uh, deploying new features. Um, and this could be, uh, for example, a sharing feature that you've got. Um, and uh, how do you do that? You basically uh, set up a flag in your uh, game and um, you can use a content management system for that uh, or something that you have the ability to control remotely. And then um, start with a small percentage, maybe 10%, and then gradually roll it out to 50% or 100% of your users. Um, and uh, a lot of users, or game developers, sorry, they, what they do is they typically start with a country, say Canada, and they roll out all their uh, games slowly there just to see what the impact looks like. Then they go geographically as well. So that's another way to implement this um, recipe and uh, this idea for A-B test. Um, now, the, uh, the way you um, target uh, here in this case is, again, there's very small uh, percentage of users, and you just uh, try to uh, increase that slowly to 100%. Um, and then what do you measure? Well, uh, in this case, it's all about the new feature that you're launching. So you need to make sure that that feature is marked with the right proper events. And you have the ability to measure um, the views for that feature, the clicks, and the engagement, which is the click-through rate as well. Okay. Um, now that you've launched a new feature, um, you've got it out there, um, the next critical step is to make sure that people are actually aware of that feature. Because uh, a lot of times what happens is the feature is really uh, widely used, um, sorry, it's really engaging for the people who know about it, but a lot of people just don't know about that feature. And so that's where uh, an in-app uh, messaging announcement can be implemented to announce the feature to the users. Um, okay, so the, tri the tricky part here though is that, um, I don't know, you've probably seen this uh, in a lot of the games you play, you just pop up an in-app message at the beginning and say, hey, uh, we've launched a new sharing feature. But uh, the tricky part again, this is uh, just not being spammy with users. And so you really need to understand what users would be potentially interested in the feature that you're sharing, uh, that you're announcing. And that's where you have uh, targeted um, behavioral targeting. And so maybe you can wire up different events for the other features in the game that are being used. And based on the engagement that you've got from users that are already using the game, uh, you can go and announce to those users only that the feature is being used. And the other thing to remember here is to always announce features only to returning users because for new users, everything is new, so it doesn't make sense to actually uh, make an announcement for them. And then you can tweak the um, in-app messaging uh, on and off. Just It's a, always a great idea to have a baseline of no in-app message just to compare uh, which what works and what doesn't. And then um, the text that you have, the uh, background image, the call to action button, all of these are critical to mm, try different versions and see what works. Um, in terms of measurement, um, there's two things to remember here. Um, the first one is the in-app message itself. How does it actually perform in terms of click-through rate, in terms of total views and clicks, but also just also the new feature. Does this uh, new um, announcement actually end up affecting the usage of the feature that you have? And uh, so that's why you need to wire your new feature with the same type of events as well to be able to track the engagement for that feature. And hopefully you'll see a lift for that based on the in-app message. Okay, the next area for improvement is uh, reactivation. And this is really critical because uh, for a lot of um, uh, game developers, it's very expensive to acquire new users. But if you already have users, uh, one way to acquire users is to just bring back old users. And so that's why this is a very strategic thing you should be thinking about, it, just how do you reactivate users who have maybe churned or maybe haven't come back in a while. Um, and it really, there's very few opportunities for you to be able to send a push notification to a user without getting them annoyed. And um, I'll share with you a couple that I uh, consider and I've seen in the industry that end up working well, uh, but there's a lot more ideas. And uh, we've actually uh, I brought in a, a little booklet with a lot of the ideas that I'm presenting here and some more. And if any of you are interested in um, uh, getting one of those, I have plenty in my backpack, so you can um, take a look as well. Uh, but uh, So let's get started here. So the first one is uh, purchase abandonment. So uh, this is a classic example from the shopping and the commerce space as well. Uh, but in the gaming space, there's a lot of in-app purchases that people have. And some people uh, in players, they uh, start an in-app purchase, but maybe they get a phone call in the middle of it, or they decide that you know they're talking to their friend and forget about it. So uh, they could potentially abandon that purchase. And so it's very important for you to be able to identify users who have um, expressed interest in the in-app purchase. They've clicked on it, but they did not complete the actual purchase. And so um, 
what, what you do in that case is maybe you can send them a push notification and just say, hey, reminder to go and uh, uh, get, you know, purchase, complete the purchase for your in-app purchase, and maybe we'll give you a 10% discount uh, if you do that right now. So you can play around with that, and there's a lot of ideas to optimize there. Um, the, you'll notice that this is not the classic uh, push notification campaign that you used to with other uh, providers in the space because uh, with the push campaigns, that you typically basically have a blast that you send out. You select the, uh, all of your users or maybe a segment of your users and you just send a push campaign to everybody. Uh, with this, this is more about marketing automation. And for, you, for some of you who are familiar with the concept of marketing automation on the web, there's companies like Marketo or HubSpot. This is about being able to um, automate the process of interacting with a user with, at the right time via email, and in this case here in the mobile app world, via push notification. And so this is really a, a big uh, difference here, is just the ability to be able to uh, send these targeted triggered push campaigns to users. And they're ongoing, they're not really a, a, a one-time thing. And so how do you uh, run this? You target basically people uh, who um, created, basically triggered the in-app purchase, but did not complete the purchase itself. And uh, you can play around with the push notification text, uh, with the discount that you're offering, and um, all of these things are great A-B testing ideas. Uh, and then how do you measure the success of your uh, campaign? Well, this is, again, the push notification has uh, deliveries, opens, and the open rate. This is equivalent to the uh, in-app message where you have a click-through rate um, there as well. And, um, and then the checkout occurrences. Okay, um, another one is level abandonment. So this is the same idea as in-app purchases abandonment, but it's for uh, player uh, level abandonment. And some, some of your players may get stuck in a particular level and they end up churning. You wanna identify those users and send them a hint at the right time to bring them back into the game. And this is again, very relevant. It doesn't feel intrusive because the push is related to whatever they did in the actual game. Um, and uh, you can play around with the push notification here and finally, uh, um, just uh, your goal is to get more people to complete their game and get more engaged. And then the final area which I wanted to talk about is monetization. Um, this is uh, really the, the piece where you uh, end up monetizing on your users, so it's very critical to think about how you do that at the right time. Um, and there's a couple of ideas here I've got. Uh, the first one is um, a classic uh, use case called uh, sources and syncs analysis. Um, so you can basically use a content management system here to wire all the possible ways that users can receive uh, virtual currency in your game, and also all the possible ways they can spend that currency. And your goal uh, to balance the economy, the virtual economy that you have, is to make sure that uh, users are not flushed with too much free currency, and they have the incentive to be able to sell, uh, so, sorry, to monetize and, and purchase currency to be able to continue in the game. So this is a fine balance that you need to strike, and this is a great area for A-B testing. So this is all about basically just wiring all of your uh, in-app purchases and all the possible ways you can uh, monetize in the game, and then trying out different amounts. And uh, the, um, the w what you look at in terms of optimization here is basically time until first monetization and uh, also just overall monetization in the game. And then the final um, idea for A-B test I have here is uh, just pricing, price sensitivity. A lot of people have tried this and it's uh, uh, very tricky to do right because uh, if your game has very natural virality, it could potentially hurt you, but uh, there's ways to do that still. Uh, you wanna make sure that you uh, either launch an A-B test in just a particular country, or uh, you can also try the pricing optimization here by just giving different discounts to different users. Um, but yeah, so really the question here is, how, what is the optimal price for unit purchases so that you can get make the most money out, uh, money out of your purchases? And uh, there's a lot of interesting research here that shows that it actually doesn't affect, price doesn't affect ARPU overall for users, but it does affect it for whales. And as you know, whales uh, are a considerable amount of uh, your revenue in the game, so you wanna make sure you get that right. Um, and uh, again, A-B testing here is about the storefront look and feel and the virtual currency prices um, and the bundles you have. And then finally, you wanna make sure that you have the right uh, uh, 